hugely good morning from Whistler, Canada. Unfortunately, this is my final day out here in this amazing country. If you follow the video yesterday, you'll know that we drove up a Ferrari 812 Superfast, a Ferrari Speciale Aperta, an Aventador SV Roadster, and a Huracan Performante, accompanied by a McLaren 720S up these incredible driving roads. It was an amazing adventure, and we concluded at the Fairmont Chateau in Whistler, which has provided me with this insane backdrop. Imagine waking up to this every morning. It's unbelievable. And to top it all off, we've had the most incredible pancakes with genuine Canadian maple syrup. So I'm so upset that I have to leave today. But not before we hop back into those supercars. Can you see them down there? Just, yeah, those ones there. Um, the roads up here, they are crazy. It's just the scale of everything. Everything is so, so big. I've spent a lot of time driving in the Alps, but there's something about the mountains and the space up here is vast. So before I go to the airport, I conveniently have to drive all the way back through those mountains on those roads in those cars before ultimately calling it a day and heading back home for some more exciting projects soon. So we're gonna head downstairs, catch up with the crew, uh, discuss some cars and point you forward in these cars as we head on those roads. Let's hit it. Skookum. Yes. What's it all about, man? Well, so it's a music <laughs> festival I've been working on for quite some time. It's yeah. in Stanley Park, Vancouver. You came out for I it. I did. So yeah, that's kind of like, other than to see this great guy, yeah. one of the main like anchor points was the festival. It was the music festival, because yeah. I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm passionate about entertainment and people. I'm passionate about music. I'm passionate about bringing people together. And this was something I've been working on for about five years in Stanley Park. It's basically the central park of New York in Vancouver is called Stanley Park. And this is a park that when Brian, Brian Adams from Vancouver, yeah, right. When Brian Adams had a number one album in 1986, uh -huh. he wanted to do a free concert in the park, and they said no because okay. it would damage the cricket pitch. Oh, really? Right. Oh, wow. That was the reason. And, I, and so ever since then, they everyone's ever said you'll never get a music anything in that park okay. because they're so concerned about the, the viability of the park itself. Well, thankfully, what we've been working on, like the brand live, the company that I own. Uh, is to just, just slowly work our way into the, into the city of Vancouver government. But the biggest challenge we had was, was bringing together our indigenous populations, the, the, the Musqueam, Squamish, and yeah, Tsleil Waututh yeah. nations, yeah. who are from that land. This is, this is sacred land where Skookum for Festival sure. is. So for, to work with the, with the indigenous nations and, all, and, and, and getting Florence and the Machine, the yeah. Killers. Oh, just the great Killers, right. I, I ended up seeing the Killers. Yeah. I love the Killers. And yeah. he was like, dude, we've well, got the Killers playing Sunday now, so I'll see you there. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> they so, were amazing. So, you came out, yeah, so we had, like, was, for the first year of the festival, we had a, yeah. over 20,000 people a day, probably even yeah. more than that. It was the awesome. Food, right, yeah. So we're going to be doing it again next year. Despite so. the rain as well, right? Well, this year, yeah, because the yeah. great thing was the weekend that we put it on was the driest weekend of the year in Vancouver, which when we <laughs> turned out to be the wettest. Isn't yeah, it? well, exactly, right? It was boring with rain, oh, right? Man. So we'll do it again next year. We had one rain in one year of the last 10. Yeah. So next year, guaranteed next year when you come. Dude, I'll be out for the full three days. Yeah, we'll the full three the days. And then we'll do some, maybe a stay longer, do some skiing. That, exactly, <laughs> oh exactly right. Totally yeah, yeah. And then hopefully, sooner or later, Gumball is going to choose to come to North America which again. Which would be sweet. Which, and maybe so we can have good. an end or start at Skookum Music right? Festival, Wouldn't right? Wouldn't that be a great start? For and sure. so the word Skookum, yes. if I may, yeah. this means like, all good. It means awesome. awesome. It, means, it means, yeah, it, it means like fair dingham or whatever. Fair dingham. <laughs> fair dingham. Fair dingham. Like you're Australians, <laughs> okay, yeah, fair yeah. dingham. It's like, that's quality. That's good. Okay. That's awesome. Skookum means yeah. a good thing. It's really good. It's good means awesome. Yes. Mega. Speaking yeah. of Skookum, we're yes. now, I mean, unfortunately, I conclude my time here today. Yeah, today. But we've. Do, would I use this in, in the right context if I was like, we're going on a Skookum drive or yes, the drive to Skookum? No, that's exactly. Yeah? It is an adjective. Okay. It okay. Make, it, 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 it's an adverb. It's an adverb. Okay. Right. It just make it just describes an action being really good. Being really good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Skookum so drive. We've had a Skookum drive and a Skookum, <laughs> Skookum visit. Let's hit it, man. And that's a Skookum car. <laughs> <laughs>
addiction is every once in a while you hit the brakes and your slurpee will start oh to roll. Oh my god. Your slurpee will start to roll. And when you go to grab it, uh, you grab the dome lid and all you actually so call like is a pint of slurpee. A Dr. Pepper slurpee. Oh, See, bro. What I managed to do was what to do with the instant re replay on it. Oh my it's huge! What's that? It's all down here. I know. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Them. You can clean it, we'll but clean. it's not a deal. It's, it's not what I to do. It's, uh, we'll get it. It's still, we'll it's still it. good. It's still good. You need a hand, man. No, I'm good. I'm, I got <laughs> this. I, no, because as it started to roll, I went to save it. <laughs> right, so I grabbed it here, thinking that'll work for sure. And all it was popped. Ah, uh, you popped off and pop went everywhere. Ah, like uh, so, so the yes, worst. It. And it was a full Dr. Pepper, large size, Slurpee. <laughs> You want to get this off quick because this stuff is like pure sugar. It'll just be sticky. Oh, it's all in the grooves, man. I know. Oh. We're, it's going to have to get detailed. Well, it didn't hit the bag at least. All right. Now we have got such a cool combo. We haven't spoken to Dylan yet. <laughs> Such a cool convoy. Uh, Dylan's the guy driving the SV Roadster. We'll try and catch up with him later. But just a bit of an update as to what's going on. Uh, we just pulled over into, coincidentally, a magnificent viewing platform. Uh, but Jordan swung in because he spilled his slurpy all over the interior of his car. I mean, he's taking it so well. If that was me, I'd basically be in tears right now. Uh, that car, as you guys know, is like five weeks old. Brand, brand new. Uh, but he's taking it like a champ. He's gonna drop it off at Ferrari later and get it all cleaned up. But we're on our way back now. And it's funny, I've just started to settle in. My jet lag is gone. I'm on the Canadian time zone. And I'm flying back home tonight, which sucks. But it's been an amazing journey. We've met some fantastic people. The people here, so friendly. Jordan's introduced us to some great guys. But ultimately, it's funny how Gumball works out. We're in Vancouver for all of five days and we've ultimately ended up with everyone on this trip right now has been on Gumball uh, last month. So we've got our own sort of small Gumball reunion happening. And uh, yeah, these guys have really immersed me in the Vancouver supercar scene and the supercar culture. As I said in the beginning of my video yesterday, uh, it transpires that Vancouver has the highest ownership per capita of supercars in the world. And when Jordan first told me, I was like, really? Because online, it never really came across that way, but it wasn't until I got here, and there was literally supercars parked on every street, and I was like, what? Why haven't I heard of this place? Uh, yeah, turns out it's exploding, and there's supercars everywhere. They've got this area downtown where all of the supercar dealerships are. It's one block, and you can just walk and bounce between McLaren to Ferrari to Lambo, etc. It's a really cool scene. They just had a Chiron downtown, and they're doing demonstrator runs in it. Now, just to put that into context, like, to try and get a demonstrator drive from Bugatti is nigh on impossible. Like, you have to have a track record of being able to own cars like that. And they're like, yeah, you can, you can take it out if you want. <laughs> or actually, they'll take you out. So the scene here in terms of supercars is exploding. I want to come back because we're just scratching the surface. Anyway, we're now uh, heading back down, winding our way back down into Vancouver follow up by some awesome cars and then we'll uh, try and catch up with Dylan. I want to know his ownership experience of the uh, SV Roadster. The significance of which is that next week I'm going to be driving the brand new Aventador SVJ. So I want to get his opinion on that car. Following it over the last few days has been amazing. It's one of the best sounding cars in the world. Uh, and every time I'm around one, I kind of want one. <laughs> and then someone will remind me that they're kind of big and a bit heavy and the gearbox isn't that great. There's something about them though, the road presence, the way they sound, the way they look. Uh, it seems that Lambo kind of seems to do that better than most right now. So SVJ Drive coming up next week and we'll go and talk to Dylan about his ownership experience of what is a, effectively a very similar car. Exhaust stock. It's race. It's from Lamborghini. It's a Lamborghini exhaust. Yeah. Though. So if you look at it, there's Lamborghini accessories. It's got it's a race real cool sculpture on it. I've not seen an exhaust like what that. What do you mean? It's what like it's not the normal Aventador shape. 
Look. No, yeah, no, it's a, it's a. Look at it. It's from Lamborghini. Look at this. So this is not normal Lamborghini. So oh yeah, Automobili Lamborghini accessory originale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's cool, man. No, so tell cool. me about the experience of this car. Like, what's what's it like being or living with an SV Roadster? Okay, the biggest thing is the anxiety that this happens. So when you this have thing. this yeah. off, yeah. and it starts raining, and it's obviously in Vancouver, it's like you never know. <laughs> yeah. um, you just know that you're gonna be kind of screwed a little bit because you can't easily take it on and off. Okay. And then when you're frantic, you end up putting the wrong side on, and then you're so constantly trying to- You have to put like the right side on in the right yeah, order, this right? This one comes up first, and then this okay. one. All right. And then obviously when it starts raining, you you don't know what's going on, and then you can't do it, and then people staring at you, and you're like, I'm so sorry, and you just mess with it. So that's probably the biggest thing. Okay. We have the uh, what's it called the bucket. You got here. the the fixed carbon buckets, which we were talking about earlier. When you f immediately sit in them, it's like a rock, right? Yes. They're like super hard. Yeah. But after a while, you're like, oh, are they okay? Yeah, you get used to it, and yeah. as long as you spread your legs. Okay. That's the to biggest thing. Give you thing. a bit of uh, yeah, yeah. comfort. Yeah, and there's uh, like the grip right there, so you kind of yeah. get the thing. You can move it back and forward, but that's about it. Okay. And yeah, there's no uh, comfort modes at all. Obviously, it's not cup holders, <laughs> not USB, no. there's no Bluetooth, there's nothing. It really? Yeah. No yeah. USB. No. Wow. Oh, which I mean, there might be. Someone might say that there is. Yeah, I can't maybe, find it. Yeah. What's What's amazing about these cars is inside, like they're so big. Yeah. Yet there's nothing in there. Yeah. There's not even a place to store your phone, right? It doesn't have a glove compartment. <laughs> yeah, and also this is now illegal in Canada. So this whole carbon fiber thing. Yeah. So this is all illegal now because. Are you serious? Yeah, because if you get hit on this side. Yeah. It's just gonna splinter. It's gonna splinter. That's so basically shrapnel. It's more dangerous to be in it's this. More dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, even no. if you don't die, you might get messed up. So are you are you gonna have to retrofit something else? No, or I is think it okay? they just you can't. They're, just, they're gonna do something. Uh, so as of now. Yeah, yeah. So next time you order a car, you won't be able to have carbon inside I guess, the yeah, door. Because it's, it's, I don't know. Crash structure yeah, thing. they just said you can't do it anymore because it's traveling. Oh, which I makes mean, sense. fair enough. Like it's it's all good until it's not. Exactly. <laughs> it's all good until you've got some carbon fiber shards in your ribs. Exactly. And then it's, or, then yeah. You're like, then it's like not fun anymore. <laughs> this also has the uh, well, I think it's the passport uh, radar detector on the right side of the steering wheel. Right hand side of the steering wheel. Okay. And you can see all the it's built in. Oh yeah. See it right there. Look at this here. So this is your radar jamming system yeah. here. And how does it work? When it senses something. Yeah, and then it basically jams the radar, and then you're supposed to hit it again so that they have to get a reading, right? So they can't okay. not get a yeah. reading. Otherwise, it's illegal to jam their tank. So what happens <laughs> is it's actually more anxiety inducing having it on <laughs> than just not. So I just keep it off. Okay. It's just get hit all the time, and you start getting paranoid. Where are they coming from? Well, yeah. What's happening? I'm being followed. Serious? Yeah. Oh, so I just turn it off. But it's really well integrated. Yeah, and also the uh, Look at you this. see the, the rear view mirror has. Yeah. So it'll tell me like when that if the K van hits me. Yeah. It'll show me right there. It shows in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So actually, that's very button. cool. <laughs> And we're back, right to where the journey began. The Specialia Pert has been fantastic, the 812 super fast, even more so. But unfortunately, I now have to catch a plane back to the UK and then immediately to Hungary for a very special event and then on to Portugal for an even more special event. So stay tuned, there's two really big uh, car updates coming soon uh, and also a massive announcement on the channel. So please be sure to subscribe because I do not want you to miss out on this one. Massive thank you to Jordan for arranging this week for me. I hope you've enjoyed the adventures in Canada. Uh, more information below, by the way, on his Skookum Festival. It was absolutely fantastic. As always guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.